common question. That when Islam is a universal religion, why don't you allow non-Muslims to enter Makkah and Medina? I happen to be an Indian. Even though I am an Indian, there are certain areas in India which are known as cantonment area. Every country has certain cantonment area, known as the military area, you know, where only those people involved with the difference of the country, they are allowed. I am a citizen of India, but I am not allowed to go in the cantonment area. But only those people who are involved with the difference of the country, they are allowed to go. No one else. Similarly, the Harmain, Makkah and Medina, they are the cantonment area of India. So Islam is for the full world. But only those people who are involved in protecting and fighting and defending Islam, only they are allowed Peace of Christ to all. As you see, this is the answer of Zakir Naik. Very clear answer. Mecca is the same as the Pentagon, the same as the defense ministry. It's not a place of peace. You see, when we say Muslims, they give you the answer, but in the in the in the different way. The question was: If Islam is a peaceful religion, why you don't allow people to go to Mecca? And if somebody go to Mecca, you kill him. If a Christian being found in Mecca, his head will be chopped out. So the answer is, you know what? I am a born citizen in India. I, I cannot go inside the building of the Department of Defense because in, I don't have a business in there. Only the employees who part of the army, they can go in. So he's saying only those who defend Islam, they fight for Allah, that is the one allowed to go to Mecca. And here we see to Zakir Naik, this foolish man, Mecca was exist before Islam and the first wife of Muhammad she was not a Muslim and the father of Muhammad was not a Muslim and the mother of Muhammad was not a Muslim and all the family of Muhammad never been Muslims and even when Muslims they say that the family of Muhammad used to follow Abraham it's a big fat lie because all the uncles of Muhammad, they are slaves of one of the idols, like Abdul Manat, Abdul Uz, Abdul Uzza, uh, uh, Abdul Lat, uh, the slaves of Allah, the slave of Uzza, the sl slave of Manat, uh, 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 Abdul Muttalib, Al Muttalib is one of the idols, uh, uh, etc. This is, you know, all the names are the names of idols. They are slaves of idols. So this is not your city anyway. You took over the city by the sword, but never been yours. People from all religion, they used to live there in peace until Islam showed up. Then the duty of Islam is to kill everybody. So the answer for why Islam don't allow the others to go inside the Kaaba is, this is a war ministry. It's not a peace ministry. Those who they are fighting for Allah, those who they are killers, those who have swords and they kill in the name of Allah, they are the one who can get the Kaaba or they can get this. You know, we don't want to go to the Kaaba. If they say you cannot enter the Kaaba, I have no problem with that. You know what? I don't want to go to that filthy place. But the issue in here is saying you cannot even get it close, not even not even 90 miles from, from Mecca. Listen carefully again. Protecting and fighting and defending Islam, only they are allowed. And Allah gives the promise. Islam, only those people who are involved in protecting and fighting and defending Islam, only they are allowed. You know, what kind of religion need protecting, defending, fighting for it? If your God is God and he will prevail anyway, he do not need fighters. If your God is true and he is true God, he do not need any sword, he do not need any man. Men need God, but God don't need men. The God who need men and need fighters, he is a hocus. He is a false God. And this is your God. And you dummy yourself. You dummy yourself. If you go to the city of Mecca or any city in Saudi Arabia, they will treat you like garbage. You know why? Because you are an Indian. And it's not a secret that all the Arab, they don't respect any of the Muslims who they are not Arab. Unless you have an American citizenship, by the way, because Muslims respect you by your citizenship. If you are a poor Indian, they spit at you. If you are a Filipino, they spit at you. If you are Indonesian, they rape you. If you are a Bangladesh, your place is to work in the garbage cleaning. 
Go there and see how the Muslims live in Saudi Arabia. You will see an American who don't have high school. He is getting a salary of five or six doctors from India. They put five, six doctors work in Saudi Arabia in one room, in one bedroom. And an American guy who don't have even a, a, a driver license, he have his own apartment, he have a driver. This is the, the, the reality about Saudi Arabia and about Arab and Muslims in general. But the most important here that he said it clearly, that those who defend Allah is the one are allowed to enter the Kaaba and to enter Mecca. And by the way, it's not only the Mecca and, and the, the Kaaba, it's uh, the, the Medina too. You know, Christian and Jewish are not allowed to enter the city of Medina. Uh, so there is two cities is forbidden totally. Uh, it, it sh actually, there is a reason for that. And until now, he did not mention the reason. The reason you cannot enter those two cities is because you are dirty, because you are filthy. It's not because those who can defend and not can, cannot defend. You know, this guy is really uh, uh, the most dummy Muslim ever I saw. Uh, he memorized. He's so good at memorizing, but he is a recording machine. He don't know what he's saying. Islam says that infidels are dirty. And Muhammad, he said, no two religion is going to be in the Arabian Peninsula after today. No two religion. The religion it should be only to Allah. And the main reason? As long you are not a Muslim, you are dirty. And here we see the racism. You know, there is there is racist people by by many ways. There's the one who discriminates you by your color. Uh, there's the one who di discriminates you by your ethnic group, by your language, and there's the one who discriminates you by your religion. This is a very filthy discrimination. The discrimination of Islam. Actually, it's the most ugly one. In Islam, they discriminate you because of your color. Like the, the 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 dummy who convert to Islam from uh, uh, any any ethnic group, you know, white or or uh, or black or it doesn't matter. Islam is number one racist religion. Even Allah in the Quran, He said, and let me show you what He said. And be careful with some Muslim translation because they always Islam is based in deception. This is Ibn Kathir. This is an Islamic website. I don't approve it, by the way. All of them, they are the same. All of them, they are a bunch of liars when you translate. It says it clearly. This is chapter 3, verse number 106. On the day, some faces will become white and some faces will become black. Will become black. Not a bright. Somebody will be white, say to you, white and whatever they try in the translation. Tabiyaddu wuju wa taswaddu wuju. And if we go and they check out in chapter 27, verse number 82, we will see the Quran saying the following. This is chapter 27, verse number 82. And you will see in here that a beast will come from the earth, which is very weird. And that beast is going to do something. Who is the one who is going to make you black and white? Do you know? It is that beast. The beast will have the stick of Moses in the right hand and will have... The ring of Salmon in the left hand. You know, the ring of Salmon is a magical ring. You know, if you watch the, the movie, the, the Lord of the Ring. Suleiman is that one. So what that beast is going to do is going to hit you with the stick of Moses and will turn you black. And it's going to hit the believer Sorry, with the, with the ring of uh, Suleiman, you will turn black. With the stick of Moses, you will turn white. So it will hit the Muslims with the stick of Moses, and everybody is going to turn very white. Now, a question. I read the story in here, how Allah will separate between people by color. And not only this, in Islam, they discriminate you even as a black. If you go and see chapter 2, verse 178, the Muslim now they say to you, this verse is abrogated. Why it's abrogated? Because Muhammad he found that you know he is really stupid when he made this verse, because this verse is very racist, and he start losing a ground between those who they have colors. Why? Because the verse says, in the case of murder, if a white man killed a white man, he will be killed, but if he kill a slave, a slave will be killed. 
if a woman, you know, if a, if a man or somebody kill a woman, his women will be killed. What kind of a stupid law like this? Imagine, I kill your wife, you kill my wife. I kill your slave, you kill my slave. And instead of having one slave victim, now we will kill, you know, two slaves, regardless if they are black or white. But is that justice? If I kill, I am a white man, I own the slaves, like Muhammad. And now, I killed your slave, so what the punishment for me? You kill my slave. This is the justice of Muhammad, because he is copying what it's called eye for an eye, and he's a dummy, you don't know what he's doing. This is not an eye for eye, you dummy. It's not like this. Put me please with more, more videos, and I hope you are learning and educating yourself. Christ is Lord, slammed by a dummy, or a dummy. I mean to that.